three weeks. Three weeks until Nebraska football kicks it off against Minnesota, start off their 2023 campaign, Mount Rule's first season with the Huskers. So in today's video, I'm going to have my official season predictions. What do I think the win-loss record will be? Some studs on offense, some studs on defense, my player awards, uh, and everything that I think is going to happen during the year. So before we get into it, if you want to see pre-game, post-game, recruiting news, all of that during the Husker football season, along with potentially some Nebraska volleyball, basketball content along the way, you want to be right here on this channel. So it really helps me out if you hit the like button, but most importantly, subscribe because uh, you don't want to miss anything that we're going to have coming up. But let's get into it right away. And let's start off with Minnesota. This is the biggest game of the year. I talked about it uh, in one of my previous videos. This sets the tempo for the entire year. You're playing a team that you've lost four straight against. P.J. Fleck has come into Lincoln and, you know, absolutely dominated us in the Frost era. Uh, right now, they're seven-point favorites. They're over-under on the year, seven wins. So I think they're going to be around seven and five. I think that's a really good line. And really, I talked about what does Nebraska do need to do in order to win this game? Establish the, the run game, especially against a D-line unit in Minnesota that lost a lot of pieces, was really underwhelming last year. And you need to take advantage of a rookie quarterback uh, who did play against us last year, but this is his first year starting. And you got to take advantage of him early in this game. This is his first game ever uh, where he's the guy. And force a couple picks, force a couple bad decisions, and get into this game and start uh, to take the lead early. Inevitably, however, the, I think we lose this game. I have my score prediction at 30 to 20. And I just think it's a little bit high scoring, but Minnesota is a high scoring team, especially at the start of the year when the weather's still warm. But um, by the way, this is the best time you want to play against Minnesota is when the weather's still warm. You do not want to go up there in November like we have in the past uh, when it's 20 degrees. But the reason why I have Minnesota winning this game is just P.J. Fleck. I trust P.J. Fleck. He's going into his seventh year. I trust Matt Rule as well. But the fact that P.J. Fleck is coming off two straight nine-win seasons and Matt Rule is rebuilding this team from the ground up, I got to go with the more established program, especially given that they're playing at home. Um, I, I, I can see Nebraska winning this game. It's a really winnable game. It just relies on, again, establishing the run, Get winning the turnover battle and dominating the trenches, which I think are possible, especially uh, when you look at Minnesota's O-line. They lost their All-American center. They lost another piece. It's an O-line that's also rebuilding. Their, their trenches aren't going to look good, at least not to start the year. Definitely need to take advantage of that, but I think inevitably they do get it done. And we start the year off 0-1. Uh, but that takes us to Colorado. Start off with two straight home games. I cannot remember the last – or not, excuse me, two straight away games. I cannot remember the last time – uh, we started off on the road twice, but we're going to go to Boulder next where we are an eight-point favorite against Colorado. They also have a brand-new head coach. We talked about him as well in one of our previous videos, Deion Sanders. And I think this is a game where you have to win by double digits. I mean, this is a game where you set the momentum. You come, you're coming off of a loss. Uh, their over-under win total this year is 3.5. I think they get lower than that. I think this is a team that goes 2-10, 3-9. Uh, it's it's dysfunctional. It's completely dysfunctional. They're replacing everybody, brand new quarterback, brand new wide receiver, brand new wide uh, running backs, brand new O-line. They only returned three starters from last year on the entire roster. Uh, ridiculous, ridiculous numbers. I, I, I think Deion Sanders, I'm a little bit higher on Deion Sanders than other people. I think Deion Sanders is a good head coach because there's a reason why he did go uh, and have great records at Jackson State. Even yeah, granted, yeah, he did have four stars, but we've seen, you know, programs have four stars and not win games. I know it's apples to oranges because he was in FCS, but I do think Deion Sanders is a decent head coach. I don't know how good of a game manager he is, but I think from a player coach, there's a reason why all these kids are wanting to go play for Deion. It's not just because of his name. It's not just because they grew up. Uh, watching his highlights, you know, there is another thing uh, that just allures them. He's a player's coach. I think he has a great chemistry on the team. I think, uh, obviously, I know everyone's wrapped around the fact that when he got there, it was all, we're well, going to kick you off the team, and which he did say, but I think from a chemistry standpoint, they're going to be all right. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say they're going to be one of the, you know, most together teams in the country, but I, I think they're going to, from a chemistry standpoint, they're going to be all right. I think Deion Sanders doesn't get enough credit. But at the same time, I think if we're comparing Deion Sanders to Matt Rule, 
it's not even close. Matt Rule is the way better head coach. I, I think we're going to blow them out. I think this is a shootout. Uh, both defenses are the weaknesses of the team. Colorado's defense is replacing everybody. Our defense, I, I hate, again, I do not like the run defense on this team. I, I think Colorado, luckily, is more of a gunslinger team. But Shadur Sanders, they have Jimmy Horn, a couple uh, USF transfers. They have a really good offense along with Travis Hunter who's going to play both ways. I think it's a shootout. I think we win uh, about 45 to 35 in this one. And uh, we do win double digits. So we start off one on one. That takes us to Northern Illinois night game. Night game at Memorial Stadium for Matt Rule's first home opener. Um, their over under win total is 6.5. And really, all you got to know about this team is they got Rocky Lombardi. I mean, remember him at Michigan State, but no. Uh, the easy win. I You shouldn't really. And I know I don't want to say easy win because last time we played a night game um, against a group of five team. We lost. We lost. Um, but that should not happen under a competent head coach. I like to believe that Matt Rule is a competent head coach. We will be Northern Illinois. Hopefully, we do not see 2017 all over again where they came into Memorial Stadium uh, against Mike Riley and did us dirty and beat us on our home turf. So, yeah, we're going to win that game. Next one, LA Tech at home. Should be an 11 o'clock game. Yeah, we're going to win that one as well. So, that takes us to 3-1. Not, not a bad start at all. Not a bad start. You're three games away from bowl eligibility, but you go ahead and play Michigan. That line is currently set at Michigan by 18 points. I would even go as far to say that by the time, eh, no, I think that, that line will probably lower because Vegas really likes Nebraska. Um, but I think this is, Michigan will blow us out. M Michigan will blow us out. This is the best team in the Big Ten. This is a team that could probably win the national championship with Georgia replacing a quarterback, replacing a lot of pieces. Uh, Alabama, we don't know what they're going to be. They missed out on the playoff last year. They're replacing a quarterback as well. Ohio State is still also replacing a quarterback. And again, this is kind of Michigan's year. Every All the stars are aligning for Michigan to can make a move and potentially uh, win the national title. I think they could do it this year. I, I you know, This doesn't hurt you if you lose this game. But I, I do think we do lose this game at home. Should be a night game through, you know, probably maybe even big noon Sunday, but a uh, big noon Saturday. But yeah, we're going to lose this game. And that takes us to three and two on the year. Then we go into a critical game against Illinois. They're over under uh, win total set at 6.5. I think that's way too low. I think Illinois is my favorite to win the Big Ten West. Brett Bielema, since he's got there, has established a culture. He's established an identity offensively and defensively, stifling defense. They had one of the best defenses in the country last year, and the running game was outstanding. I mean, if you were watching, if you were watching Illinois last year, they looked like a classic Wisconsin team. Um, this team is really, really good, and I know they're replacing Chase Brown. Uh, they're replacing Devon Witherspoon, Quan Martin, a couple um, pretty good players on their offense and defense, along with their defensive coordinator, Ryan Walters, who is now at Purdue. But I, I still love this team. I think the West is going to be bad this year. And I find it hard to believe that we're going to go into Illinois on a Friday night game. Don't love that Friday night game and beat them. It's just going to come down to the run game. It's going to come down to the run game. I think the run defense on our team is the worst – We've had, I don't like, I don't, I mean, the three three five is not a defense built to stop the run, by the way. If you watch Tony White at all at Syracuse, they played Clemson last year. They were really solid last year until up until that Clemson game and Clemson just gashed them. And you want to know why they did? I think they ran for about three, they, they ran for 200, 300 yards in that game. Clemson did against Syracuse and Tony White because Syracuse defense was not ready. They, they are a defense when you have five defensive backs on the field, they're ready to um, defend the pass. That's why they have so many, they had so many cornerback safeties get drafted to the NFL. That Syracuse really was a secondary machine, but man, their run game was really bad. I don't think that'll change within the first year. I think Illinois will gash us in the run game and they're going to beat us. And that's going to take us to three and three, 500. Still not bad, but you're looking at Northwestern and Purdue next. Whew. And that's enticing. Um, Northwestern over under wins is 3.5. I'm taking the under every single day of the week. We win that game at home. Yeah, that this is going to be, again, the worst team in Power 5 this year. I think they are, are going to be awful. They're going to be an awful team, especially with Pat Fitzgerald out, who's basically the last. 
I, I was a Pat Fitzgerald believer. I know he went 1-11 last year, but there was a – I mean, if he wasn't there, they would have went 0-12. They, they would have lost us. So, no, Northwestern is going to be awful this year. We're going to beat them, and that's going to take us to 4-3. and Next is Purdue, and their over-under wins is 5. I think we also win this game, takes us to 5-3. and three. Ryan Walters is a heck of a coach, man. Heck of an defensive coordinator. He's going to be really good for Purdue in a couple years. But I want to tell you one thing. When Jeff Brom left Purdue to go to Louisville – the team fell apart. The team fell apart. You lost Aiden O'Connell. Um, you lost a couple key members of that offense. It's not a good team this year. It's not a good team this year. The only player you really return is your starting running back, who was a walk-on, who gashed Nebraska last year. But uh, besides that, yeah, they're they're going to be horrendous. I think it'll be about three and nine on the year. We pick up the dub, and those are two much-needed dubs coming off of two straight losses, and that takes us to five and three. Going into East Lansing, Michigan State, we have bowl eligibility. We have four games to clinch bowl eligibility. And you have a winnable game against Michigan State, who was horrendous last year. Uh, they did not go bowling. Mel Tucker, after a really good year, the year previous, just tanked the season. Tanked it. And they remember, they signed to an insane contract. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. He'll be in East Lansing at least for the next three years. So, they they got a lot of rebuild, but we know one thing about Mel Tucker. Mel Tucker knows how to rebuild. He knows how to get guys in the portal and have them be productive in year one. We saw that in 2021 when they were one of the best teams in the country, period. He found Kenneth Walker, and he became the best running back in the country. I, I really like Michigan State's chances to bounce back. I think Michigan State probably will end around a 7-5 team. That's not great, uh, but considering that they're playing in the Big Ten East, and also playing a non-conference game against Washington. It's not bad. I I don't like this game. I don't like this game. It'll likely be an afternoon game. Going into East Lansing, historically, since we joined the Big Ten, we've owned Michigan State, even when they were good. We went into East Lansing and got wins, but that 2021 game, uh, bad mojo. Man, we sold that game. Uh, yeah, but for that reason, I, I really... I. I don't see us winning this game at East Lansing. Mel Tucker just knows how to beat us. He's 2-0 against us in his career as a head coach. Uh, I don't see that changing. Hopefully Matt Rule can scheme against them. It, they shouldn't be a hard team to beat, but I don't like playing on the road in this one. And that's why I have the win going to MSU. So that takes us to 5-4 and four going into the huge, huge game against Maryland. Maryland's over-under is 7 wins. I think they'll be over this. I think this is an 8 and 4, 9 and 3 even potential team. This is Michael Oxley's best team he's had so far at Maryland. And they're coming to Lincoln for the first time and it feels like forever. Uh we get to see Tulia Tungavailo who's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. I think we win this game. I I think that we win this game. I think this is a statement win. This is the best win of the year by Matt Rule. He's going into it. We're 5 and 4. The next couple of games are Wisconsin, Iowa. You don't know if you're going to win those. And he says, no, we're going to clinch bowl eligibility right now. Jeff Sims has a great game. Um, and we beat, I bet, I think they're going to be ranked going into this game. I think we beat a ranked Maryland team at Memorial Stadium to clinch bowl eligibility for the first time since 2016. This is a huge game. Um, really, it, it reminds me of when we played Maryland in 2019. Absolutely killed them. Um, but that's what we need to do again. That's what we need to do again. This is not schematically this is not a really impressive team they're gonna throw the ball on you this is a kind of a you know uh pass heavy team not really a run dog run the ball down your throat we are built to stop the pass we are built to um really shut down teams like this i think tulia has a bad day i think hard zog potentially gets a couple picks i'm hyped up about this game this is an exciting game you get to see a really good quarterback from memorial state and i think we get the win so um that's a big one Next one is against Wisconsin. So we're going in this game six and four. It's at Wisconsin. It's a night game. So with the Big Ten adjusting, adding new pieces, they are now allowing night games in November. We're going to be going into Camp Randall, 10 degrees, 20 degrees. I hate this. I, I, I hate this. this. This is horrendous. This scares me more than anything. Their over-under is 8.5. You have Luke Fickle. Um, they're going to be more of a pass-heavy team. I don't think they're going to be a completely pass-heavy team. A lot of people were reading into it too much. I, I talked about it in one of my previous videos, and they were like, oh, no, they're going to be a, you know, they're going to be practically a 90% passing team. No way. No way. Okay. 
they're going to play their strengths right now, which are the running game, right? It's still built like uh, Paul Chris built it. They're going to take advantage of Braylon Allen, who's going to be the best running back in the country this year. So no, it's not going to be a, a Mike Leach type offense this year. No, don't expect that. Expect more of a 60%, 40% passing the football ratio. Um, I, 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 yeah, so the, but I, I do think Luke Fickle is a heck of a head coach. I wanted him at Nebraska. He was my first choice at rules. My second, um, yeah, I, I think, I think they get this dub. It's really, it's hard. We have not had success against Wisconsin. We've not beat them since 2012. I don't see that ending this year. I don't see us going to camp Randall on a night game or not. Yeah. Night game. Um, 10 degrees, 20 degrees. There's, I just don't see it happening. So yeah, we lose this game against Wisconsin. That takes us to six and five. Here we go. Going in the Iowa game at six and five. I was over under a 7.5. I think they'll be below this. And it's the big one. You're playing at home. You're coming off a win last year at Kinnick. You previously lost the last seven against them. I think, I think, this is going to be a battle of the trenches. Same deal as last year. Battle of the trenches. Who wins it? Um, and really, what happened last year, excuse me, it wasn't really a battle of trenches last year, but what happened last year, we caught them off guard. We hit them with a touchdown early in the game, and it was ours from the taking. It was They couldn't come back from that. And that was that's how they're built with their offense, right? If you take the lead early by one or two touchdowns, you won the game against Iowa. They cannot come back against you. Their offense is not built to come back from multiple scores. Brian Ferris is still there. He's still the offensive coordinator. You got to strike early in this game. At home, we have no problem doing that with Frost. I mean, you remember we played Oklahoma last year before they absolutely routed us. Um, we started off that game 7 0. So it's really going to come down to starting early, starting, um, starting with a lead early and. You know, not giving up a lead late. We kind of did last year. This defense really wanted to give Iowa the win. We were tw it was 24-0, and then we ended the game. I think it was 24, 24-20 or 24-17. But uh, we really wanted to give the game away last year. So the keys to the game, start the game off early uh, and get a, get a touchdown, get a field goal on the board, and win the trenches. This is a game where you got to throw the football. Iowa is not built to stop the pass. Or stop, they're built to stop the run. That's why they've had some good success against Minnesota, Illinois, even Wisconsin. They've had success against. They're built to stop the run, um, and there's no there, there's no coincidence why they're losing to Purdue every year too. Purdue is the only team in the Big Ten West in the last couple of years that was throwing the football, it, you know, and they lost to Purdue every single year. Even when Purdue is a way worse team, this is a game. I know there's going to be a lot of people who just want to see us to run the football all the time. This is not a game you do it. This is a game where you throw the football 70% of the snaps. Because that is what you need to do to be an Iowa defense defense that is built to stop the run. Um, so, yeah. That, that, I, I do think we win this game, though. I think Iowa is going to implode at the end of the year. This could even be Kirk Ferentz last year. I don't think he wants to deal with the new uh, Big Ten Conference. I don't think he wants to deal with NIL. I think he wants to get out of here. I think this might be his last year. I know I feel like I'm saying that every year, but I feel like this is really it. So I think we get the dub seven and five, uh, four and five in conference play. Not a bad year for Matt Rule. Not a bad year at all, especially with a lot of deficits on this team. I think from a talent perspective, and especially from a depth perspective, this team is really lacking. Matt Rule uh, inherited a terrible situation. Frost gave him nothing. We're looking at a quarterback room that has no depth behind Sims, a O line that has no depth um, behind it, the starting five. We're talking about a wide receiver room that has no depth besides the starting four, and then it's all true freshmen from there. We're talking about a tight end room that has no unproven players. So, from a roster perspective, it's not a great roster, but the schedule is really easy, and I think it's really manageable, especially for a really good game manager, head coach like Matt Rule to take advantage of. So, let's get into my awards. Who do I think is going to be the Offensive MVP, defensive MVP, breakout player, best freshman on the team, um, and all that. So my offensive MVP, who I think that I'll go to, who I think is going to be the best player on our offense, and this is going to be Gabe Irving. This is going to be Gabe Irving. I think he's going to be running back one. You hear what Matt Rule's talking about him. that He was running with the ones in the first week of fall ball. This is not by mistake. He will be carrying the, tote, carrying the rock um, more than anybody else on this roster. I think this is a dude who ends the year with about 850 yards and eight touchdowns. That that sounds about right for a guy like Gabe Irving. 
you got to remember, it's still going to be running back by committee. I think Anthony Grant will get a lot of snaps, even though uh, he is kind of facing some suspension issues and, you know, not buying into the culture. Uh, I know a lot of people might say, oh, what about Jeff Sims? What about Jeff Sims? Currently, I have projected uh, Jeff Sims to kind of have about 2,500 passing yards, 500 rushing yards, 18 touchdowns, and 10 INTs. Uh, when it comes down to it, I think the INTs are just going to kill him. I then We're talking about a guy, you, if you were watching the Big Ten – when they went to Nebraska's fall camp, they kind of ran a special about it. They said that Jeff Sims was is the number one quarterback in college football when it comes to turnovers. Who is returning? And that's not – it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio. I've talked about it all offseason long. A lot of people were banking on this dude being a great quarterback. And then Nebraska fans, I, I for some reason, they found out this bit of information on Big Ten – uh, network and they were tweeting about like what 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 and that kind of concerns me like I've been saying this all offseason Jeff Sims is not a great quarterback all right he comes in with a lot of issues he reminds me of kind of an Adrian Martinez really good dual threat right he can run the football he can throw off his back foot do all that but he's going to be a turnover machine when it matters the most and honestly I don't trust Adrian Martinez to make a game-winning drive for us. And I don't know if I trust Jeff Sims to make a game-winning drive for us. And I feel the exact same way. They're basically really similar players. I even say maybe Adrian was a better passer and Jeff's a better runner. So I, I, I'm I very conservative about Jeff Sims. So that that's my offensive MVP, just to kind of answer a question there. Um, an, another offensive leader, I think Billy Kemp will be a receiving leader with uh, 55 receptions, 700 yards, about five touchdowns. He's not going to be a touchdown magnet. Usually slot receivers aren't. Uh, but 700 yards sounds about right. He's not elite. He's not elite. He's not Trey Palmer. He's not a, uh, a deep threat by any means. So I think that sounds about right for him. Hopefully he plays all the games in the year. Uh, he had some injury issues last year with Virginia. So that's my offensive MVP is Gabe Irving. Let's go to the defensive MVP. This one wasn't really hard to think about. It's going to be Luke Reimer. Um, they announced the single digits. Who got the single digits? That being Jeff Sims. Um... Billy Kemp, Isaac Gifford, and Luke Reimer. Those are the four players who got the single digits. Luke Reimer's a stud, man. He's a captain on this defense. This isn't going to be any surprise. He's going to be our defensive MVP. I'm not a huge Reimer guy. I think there's a lot of things he lacks, but he's the best player on the defense by far. I'd say the only guy that kind of rubs up against him might be Marquez Buford. So that's my defensive MVP. That's going to go to Luke Reimer. Offensive breakout player. This one's going to go to Xavier Betts. You might hear Thomas Fedoni. You might hear, um, I don't know, you might hear maybe a transfer to. You might hear, uh, I, I said Ramirez Jones. I put that out there. My, Jeff Simmons might count as a breakout player. No, it's going to be, I think it's going to be Xavier Betts. This has been the best performing receiver at fall camp so far. He got a little dinged up. Um, so he's out for the foreseeable future, which, I mean, should be like a, should be like a week at most. But Xavier Betts, he was a monster within the few, first week. He was catching jump balls. He was one of the fastest guys on the team. We already knew that before. This is a dude who just struggled to got, get on the field in the Frost regime. Struggled to get on the field, struggled to learn the playbook. If he does the right things, which I think he will, and I think uh, he's gravitating towards the staff, I, I think he's going to be a stud. I think he's going to be a stud. I think this is a dude who gets 500, 600 yards and really makes us believe he's going to be Potentially an NFL draft pick, not not next spring, but the spring after uh, he'll be your wide receiver one next year. So I think Xavier Betts is going to be our offensive breakup player. And defensive breakup player is going to go to Isaac Gifford. Isaac Gifford, you heard the first Frost regime. They loved him. Same deal here with Matt Rule. Uh, he got the single digit like we just talked about. And he's a dude who's got a lot of snaps the last couple of years, but it's just nothing flashy. Nothing flashy. The stats don't really pop out at you. I think this is a guy who could get a couple picks this year, really make a difference at that rover nickel type position in this defense. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited. We really need a stud there. I, I This guy kind of reminds me of an Iowa DB. Like this, the, the Iowa DBs you see all the time, uh, just kind of a ball hawk, but just feisty, feisty. That, that, this is what Isaac Gifford is. So I think he's going to be our defensive breakout. And then best freshman, Cameron Lenhart. Next question. Next question. This dude is not red shirting. He's going to be a star on the defensive line. Matt Rule already sees he's a leader on this team. I think Cameron Lenhard might even lead the team in sacks. That's how good I feel about him. I have him projected for six sacks. Um, 
I'm a huge Kevin Lehart guy. There, I might not be drinking the Kool-Aid as much as some other people. You know, here by here, people say 10 wins, 9 wins. Maybe not the win t category, but I am absolutely drinking the Kool-Aid on Cameron Lenhart. I think this dude, by the time he's a junior, not only will be one of the best players in the Big Ten, but in the country. I think this guy could be a first-rounder. That's how high I'm, like, I am on Cameron Lenhart. So, um, yeah, that's my best freshman. And that kind of wraps up all my awards, all of my uh, predictions this year. 7-5, seven, 7-5, five, seven, five. it's a great year. It's a great year for Matt Rule going into a huge, huge 2024 campaign um, where you're having four new teams join the Big Ten. kind of sets the stage for the next 10, 20 years that that season does. So hopefully we have a good year that kind of sets the foundation. Really excited for it. Um, excited for this year too. I just, I, I, I think 7-5, and five, I talked about it before. At best, I think we could go maybe 9-3 and three at worst. We could go three and nine. We could go three and nine. It's very possible with this team and um, just a lack of talent that's on here. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Matt Rose is going to get the best out of them, and we're going to be seven and five um, going into a big 2024 year. So that's my season prediction. If you want to add anything, disagree, agree, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, man, fun video to make for you guys. But uh, as always, hit the subscribe button. I want to tell you this right now: there is nobody on YouTube that's going to be quicker when it comes to reaction videos, pre-game, post-game. This is the place to be. This is the place to be. There's a lot of great Husker content creators. I think I'm right up there with the rest of them. So this is a place you want to subscribe to and um, tune in every, when you can. So as always, go Big Red, go Matt Rule. Excited to see you in the next one. Go Big Red, everybody.